You can show me that switch right behind you. But it, it isn't a switch, though. <laughs> Sorry, the router. <laughs> it isn't that we don't. We're not calling this the router either. <laughs> well, pulling it now. It's like a, that's a big change. Right. Function as a router. We are not calling these routers. These are platforms. Okay, so that was a very interesting conversation. Cisco are not calling these devices routers. They're calling them edge platforms. And the reason for that is that they're saying that the market has shifted. We no longer just have a device that does routing. It's a device that does many things. It can support voice. So these edge devices can support voice. They can be voice gateways. It can support switching. It can support traditional routing. Before we continue, I wanna thank Cisco for sponsoring this video. Another very interesting thing I thought was that these devices support 100 gig. Now remember, this is an edge device. This is not a core device in your LAN. This is not a device that's central to the core of your local area network. It's an edge device. It's a router. Cisco, once again, not calling it that because the function of router has changed or evolved into a lot more than just pure routing. But think about it, edge device supports multiple 40 gigabit ethernet interfaces or multiple 100 gig interfaces. So you can connect to your WAN using very high speed interfaces. But in addition, this device supports the latest QFPs. So what is a QFP? You're not going to wanna to send your traffic in clear text across the internet today. You're gonna to wanna to encrypt it. We wanna use IPsec and encrypt our traffic as it's sent across the internet. On the local area network, we may wanna use MacSec. In other words, we wanna encrypt traffic on the local network. We also wanna encrypt it across the internet. Encryption and decryption requires processing power, and the QFPs give us high-speed encryption and decryption of traffic. They also provide high-speed routing and SD-WAN capabilities. Network speeds are continuously increasing. These devices can support 100 gigabit or 40 gigabit ethernet ports. If you've got high-speed forwarding of traffic, you're gonna want to have high-speed forwarding of encrypted traffic, and hence you need the QFPs for that. Third generation QFPs give us high speed encryption, high speed forwarding, and a whole bunch of other features. Okay, so what is a QFP? It's a quantum flow processor ASIC. So it's a special type of ASIC used in the latest Cisco devices. Unfortunately, Cisco weren't able to ship me a physical edge platform, but they did give me early access to the 8000V. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that when the 8000V boots up, it boots up and has the name router. These devices run iOS XE. So when it boots up, it says router, it looks like a router, acts in many ways like a router, supports routing protocols such as BGP, OSPF, and so forth, supports switching, does voice as mentioned, but it does a whole bunch of other things. You can run Snort on the 8300s as an example. You can run Wireshark. It supports Linux containers. It supports KVM virtual machines. But probably one of the biggest changes is that it supports software-defined WAN. Okay, so this is a really interesting one. Same operating system, so iOS XE, but you can configure it in two modes. It can either run in autonomous mode, so running by itself, similar to an autonomous access point, or you can run it in SD-WAN mode, where we have a controller controlling the iOS XE device. It's very interesting to see how the world moves on in the old, old days, we had autonomous access points, and these days we have either autonomous or lightweight access points, and an access point can be configured as one or the other. Now we have these edge platform devices that can also either run in autonomous mode or in controller mode. So SD-WAN mode or autonomous mode. So this is about Cisco adapting to trends in the market, so trends in networking. Cisco are calling these devices edge platforms rather than routers because the definition of a router has changed over the years. Rather than just being a routing device, it's actually an edge device connecting, for instance, the LAN to the WAN, but providing a whole bunch of extra services. As an example, it provides connectivity from distributed locations to both data centers and to the cloud, and it addresses the new realities of the WAN edge. In other words, multi-cloud environments, edge compute, and emerging technologies such as SASE or Secure Access Service Edge, as well as 5G. So in the old days, we might have had a serial link or a lease line. Now we have, say, an MPLS connection, we have an internet connection, and we have a cellular 5G connection. We need to be able to dynamically route traffic 
across those different paths and do it perhaps on a per application basis. The definition of a traditional router has changed and hence this is called an edge platform. Now many years ago, Cisco sold these devices. This is an example of a 2500 series router. A lot of people still use them for labs as an example, using the async ports on the device. This is a classic router. Here we have a switch. This is a 1900 series switch, a really, really old switch as well. So these are from the 1990s, very old devices. But it was clear cut, this is a router and this is a switch. This performed layer two switching, this performed routing. But then things got a little bit more complicated. What is this? Is this a router or is this a switch? This is known as a layer three switch. So it's a switch 3750, a really old switch as well, but very popular for labs. But this has routing capability. So this would be a layer three switch because it supports switching and routing. This as an example would be a classic switch because it only supports switching, doesn't support routing. In those days, if you wanted to route from one VLAN to another, you would use a router to do inter VLAN routing using a router on a stick. But notice what's happening here, the lines are getting blurred. Is this a router, is it a switch? It became known as a layer three switch because it supports switching as well as routing. But what about this device? What is this? Now this once again is an old device, been around for many years. But notice how the lines are blurring. Is this a switch? It has switching capability. Is it a router because it can route from the LAN to the WAN? Or is it perhaps a PBX? Because notice it's got FXO and FXS ports. So is it a PBX or telephone system? Is it a switch providing inline power, layer two connectivity, or is it a router? Notice how the lines are getting blurred. Here we could put in a serial connection to connect us to the WAN. So that's like a routing function. Here we could switch from one port to another based on MAC address, that's a switching function. Here we could make telephone calls from a analog phone as an example to the public switch telephone network, that's a PBX. The lines are getting blurred and that's only happening more and more. So the Cisco Catalyst 8000 edge platforms are not called a router even though they have routing functionality. They are called platforms because they support many kind of functions Rather than just being pure routers, we now have what are called edge devices or edge platforms. They support software-defined WAN. They support multiple connection options. So we could use MPLS, we could use a traditional internet connection, say using ADSL or leased line or cable. But we can also support cellular technologies such as 4G or 5G. And then this device can act either in autonomous mode where it's configured individually or in SD-WAN mode where it's controlled by a central controller. These devices were managed generally through the CLI. They were, are autonomous. In other words, they function as a standalone unit, but with software-defined WAN and the whole idea of controllers, we would have a central device that can control many remote devices and redirect traffic based on requirements, business requirements, time of day, other types of requirements. So. The edge platforms can either run in SD-WAN mode or they can run in autonomous mode. This trend has been happening for quite a while. In the old days, we had access points that were autonomous access points. Then we had lightweight access points where they were controlled by a controller. A few years ago, some vendors started supporting OpenFlow and the idea where the router or switch would become dumb and be controlled centrally and not have a local brain. That's not the way we're doing it here. This can either function totally independently in autonomous mode or can be managed by an SD-WAN central device. These devices have a lot of features. One example is something as simple as RFID as well as tags to identify devices. If you're in a data center and you have racks and racks of equipment, you may struggle to identify a device in front of you. So Cisco have two options here. We've got the label tray, which has a plastic strip that you can pull out and then you can get the device details or if you're within one to four meters, you can use RFID to identify a device. So it has an RFID tag. Makes it so much easier to identify devices in various scenarios. We've got three types of devices here. We've got the 8000V, 
virtual software that you could run, as an example, in the cloud or on ESXi if you wanted to, or on other hypervisors. We've got the 8300 Edge devices, and we've got the 8500 aggregation devices. But what I wanna show you is the 8000V running within CML. In this example, I've got two 8000Vs and an iOS V running within CML. It takes a long time for this device to boot, but when it boots, you'll notice an option like this, system booted in autonomous mode. In this example, I'm not using SD-WAN. I'm simply using this as a standalone autonomous device. I'll go to enable mode, show version. You can see here that this device is using Cisco iOS XE software version 17.4.1 EFT2. I got an early release version of this software, so I've been using it for a while now. What you'll notice is because this is running Cisco iOS XE, the interface is very familiar. You'll see other output, obviously, because this is a different device. As an example, we can see here that router operating mode is autonomous once again. Show run. So show run shows us the configuration of this device, which once again is very similar to any other router you may have worked on. Show IP protocols shows us the routing protocols running on this router. I've configured the router with OSPF. Show IP route shows us the routing table. You can see that we've learned routes through OSPF. As an example, if I ping 2.2.2.2, that's the loopback of the second 8000V router. And if I ping 3.3.3.3, that's the iOS V router. So there you go, I've got two 8000Vs running within CML. Now you may wanna know how I imported this into CML. You basically need to download a QCAR2 file from Cisco and then upload that to CML. So under tools, node and image definitions, I have created an 8000V node definition. You can see that I've given it the ID C8000V, description is 8000V, type is router. The image that I'm using is a C8000V image. So just to show you how I did that, under tools, node and image definitions, under image definitions, I've also created a C8000V device. And I uploaded this image to CML. So the ID here is C8000V, label is the same, description is the same. This is the image that I downloaded from Cisco's website and uploaded to CML. The node definition is C8000V. Under Linux, I gave it four gig of RAM, two CPUs, CPU limit is 20, data disk size is 16 gig, boot disk size is 16 gig. So if I go back and have a look at node definitions once again, under the node definitions, ID description is C8000V. It's a router once again. It's visible in the user interface as C8000V. Prefix is the same. Icon that I'm using is a router. Label is the same, C8000V. The Linux native simulation that I'm using is KVM. The simulation driver that I'm using is the CSR1000V. Disk drive information, memory, CPU, and CPU limit information is once again shown here. Here's the network driver, data disk size, boot disk size. I haven't specified a video model or video memory. I have configured a loopback interface and two serial interfaces and a default of four physical interfaces with these names, gigabit one, two, three, and four. Boot information I've set to 250. I haven't enabled Pi ATS. I've set property inheritance as the following. I haven't specified a configuration generator and I haven't enabled automatic provisioning. So those are the settings that I've used. You basically have to set up a node and image definition and you have to upload the QCAR2 image to CML. And then once you've done that, when I add a new topology as an example, the C8000V displays as an available device. So I can drag that device into my topologies and use it. So once again, I've got two 8000Vs running in this topology and I can connect to the console of the devices and see options about the devices, including the physical interfaces and which interfaces are up or down. Same on this 8000V, 
So once again, show IP interface brief, show IP OSPF neighbors. I've got two neighbors, I can see information about those neighbors. I can also see the routing table and I can once again ping the loopbacks of the routers in this topology. So you need to download the QCOW2 file from Cisco and then go to tools, node and image definitions once again, you need to configure an image definition for your device and you need to configure a node definition for your device so that you can import those devices into CML. So once again, I'll just click on those options so you can see it under image definition. There are the details and going back under node definition, here are the details for the node definition. Now I was just using the settings that I thought were best there may be more optimized settings than what I'm using here, but this device hadn't been released by Cisco when I created this. I had a pre-release version of the software, didn't find any documentation out there, so I simply went with what I thought would work, and in my example, it did. One issue you may have is that unless you allocate a lot of memory and CPU to the devices, they will use a lot and they may be slow, but that's okay. I'm able to create topologies using the Cisco Catalyst 8000V Edge software on my Mac. This is running within CML, within VMware Fusion on my Mac. But you could do something similar on ESXi or Windows as an example. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, wanna wish you all the very best.